ADRA promotes the safety and inclusion of children with albinism through education and health in Tanzanian schools. Adventists break new ground by empowering youth to communicate and include the deaf community in the Philippines. Advent Health revolutionizes early breast cancer detection with advanced artificial intelligence. Youth head an environmental task force reshaping landscapes and raising community awareness in Panama. Adventist Church in Spain impacts the community with Expo Bible, sparking spiritual conversations and distributing Christian literature. Watch these and other inspiring stories now on a and In Tanzania, individuals with albinism face life-threatening risks from sun exposure, often leading to cancer and premature death. ADRA is taking action to enhance their quality of life through vital protection and support programs. This video presents compelling stories of resilience, but viewer discretion is advised as some images may be sensitive. In many countries, albinism has become associated with superstitions that cause fear discrimination, and persecution. Many people believe that people who suffer from this disorder are haunted or cursed by God and must endure a life of albinism as punishment for some evil they did in a previous life. Many people believe that albinism is a contagious disease causing people to avoid contact and integration. The stigma is there. People with albinism are stigmatized. If we get too close to people in the street or market, they spit on us. When we walk down the road, if we meet a woman who is pregnant, she will move to the other side of the road because she is afraid that if she gets close to us, she might have a baby who is like us. We are considered worthless to most people. We have no value to them at all. But what can we do? When they spit on us, what can we say? We choose not to be mean in return. They are God's children as well. God loves them as much as he loves us. We must love them too and forgive them. Perhaps one of the most tragic ideas is the belief that People with albinism's bones and body parts can transmit magical powers that will bring prosperity to the user. This has caused people with albinism, even children, to be hunted, killed, and dismembered. Graves have been desecrated and the bones sold on the black market to be used in witchcraft rituals. Sadly, most people with albinism die by the age of 40 from health conditions that could be easily prevented. Exposure to the sun can be highly damaging to the eyes and skin. Sunscreen, protective clothing, hats and sunglasses are essential for the health of people with albinism. ADRA Tanzania has been working with the albinism community for over 20 years. Teaching life skills, they encourage the people with the message, disability is not inability. They have been providing education and awareness on methods to prevent skin cancer and providing treatments for people who present with precancerous conditions. When the COVID-19 pandemic struck Africa, many businesses and factories closed their doors, including the only factory in Tanzania that produces sunscreen. This has caused a severe shortage of sunscreen throughout the country. When it can be found, the price has risen so high that the people who need it the most cannot afford it. During the pandemic, most people with albinism have struggled to find enough income to purchase food for one daily meal, let alone find funds for expensive lotions. My name is Victoria. Ever since my husband left me, I have been struggling to feed my three children on my own. 
The only work that I am able to find is as a day laborer out in the fields exposed to the hot sun. This is why I look like this. The clinic says that my condition is not good. For six months I have been trying to secure some sunscreen to protect myself, but there has been none to be found. I have been praying that God will help us. As if in answer to Victoria's pleas, along with the prayers of many of her friends, Adra Canada was recently contacted by Health Partners International of Canada. They had noticed the work that Adra was doing with the community of people with albinism in Tanzania. They offered to provide pallets of sunscreen for Tanzania. Of course, Adra agreed, and the shipment was arranged. The life-saving sunscreen was received in Tanzania with the most profound gratitude. I do not have enough words to thank Adra for the beautiful gift they have given to my friends and I with albinism. Having access to Adra's mobile clinic and sunscreen distribution at the same time has been an honest answer to prayer. Thank you for touching our lives. After going so long without protection, Adra has come to our rescue. May God bless you for giving us this lotion. This sunscreen will have a significant impact on our lives. It will keep away the cancer. I thank you so much. May God continue to bless you so that you will be able to provide more lotion for us in the future. Adra's work in Tanzania shows that disability is not inability. Their ongoing support has enabled the albinism community to overcome major challenges. In the southern Philippines, Adventist Sign Language trainers are helping social work interns foster greater inclusion and understanding of the deaf community. A local college institution in the South Philippines, Aurelio Mendoza Memorial College, organized a Filipino sign language training session to equip social worker interns with essential communication skills. The Adventist Church in Zamboanga, Philippines, spearheaded the initiative to equip interns with the tools needed to build relationships and communicate effectively with the deaf community. These deaf educators provided invaluable insights into deaf culture and the intricacies of Filipino sign language. Their commitment to sharing their language with the hearing community played a crucial role in helping participants gain a deeper understanding of the deaf community's perspectives and experiences. The Seventh-day Adventist Church remains committed to serving and being a blessing to all, including the deaf community. Through Adventist Possibility Ministries, the church aims to inspire, equip, and empower people with disabilities while also advocating for their right to accessibility and inclusion in every aspect of life. Now, a new development that promises to revolutionize the fight against breast cancer in the United States. In celebration of National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, Advent Health is launching a pioneering program in Florida that combines artificial intelligence and genetics to detect the disease risk early. The new GRACE program from Advent Health uses artificial intelligence to personalize breast cancer risk assessments. The technology cross-references patients' medical and family histories with anonymous data from thousands of cases, allowing for a more detailed and accurate risk analysis. This advancement is significant as for decades, diagnoses were almost exclusively based on age and family history, often delaying early detection. In fact, according to the American Cancer Society, one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime, making early detection critical. This GRACE program uses machine learning and AI, uses it in two ways. The first way is AI-enhanced image analysis of the actual density on the mammogram. This assists the radiologist determine the correct density because that ultimately flows into the risk assessment model. The model themselves also use AI. After the mammogram, the artificial intelligence generates an estimate of the patient's breast density and the radiologist can confirm or adjust this value. The accuracy of the AI models is so high that in about 96% of cases, Radiologists agree with the analysis provided by the technology. If the patient is high risk, they are navigated by a dedicated nurse navigator, and that person ensures that the patient proceeds along the high-risk clinical pathway. 
we've learned that 20 to 21 percent of the women who come in to get an annual mammogram are actually at high risk. And we've learned that our nurse navigator is absolutely invaluable in connecting those women with the appropriate resources, as well as providing support, information, and guidance. Patient follow-up is done in a personalized manner, and the role of the nurse navigator has been fundamental in guiding high-risk patients, providing emotional support, and steering the next steps in the diagnostic process. As the GRACE program continues to expand, Advent Health aims to screen approximately 100,000 women annually, significantly increasing the chances of early detection and potentially saving countless lives. As the genomics nurse navigator, I hear every day people talking about how they didn't know how to access care, how they were, this has been on their mind, they're scared um, because of their family history. They've sought out advice before and have told that, been told that they don't qualify. And so they're so grateful that there's somebody there to hold their hand through the process and make sure that they're getting the care that they need. The combination of high technology with personalized care is transforming the way breast cancer is detected and prevented increasing the chances of a cure and saving many lives. In Panama City, about 400 young volunteers from the Seventh-day Adventist Church participated in a significant beach cleanup initiative. Their efforts aim to combat plastic pollution while reaffirming their commitment to caring for the environment. Young volunteers gathered at Costa del Este Beach to collect trash as part of the government's Oceans Month activities. The cleanup focused on the challenge of plastic pollution, with reports indicating that plastics constitute a significant portion of ocean waste. Participants like 14-year-old Rolando Line noted the impact of their efforts, realizing how small actions contribute to larger environmental goals. Their work not only cleaned the beach, but also inspired community awareness, proving that collective action can lead to meaningful change. Great job to these young leaders for making a difference. On today's episode of ANN Profiles, host Alyssa Truman interviews Elias Brazil de Souza, director of the Biblical Research Institute of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Together, they discuss how the Institute addresses modern theological challenges and fosters a global community of faith through education and research. Uh, the BRI is one of the institutes or departments, I, would, I wouldn't say department, but a service of the church. Uh, we are five scholars, three assistants, and we basically do research to help to promote the church's message, its lifestyle, and its mission. So we do publications, we travel doing Bible conferences and lecturing around the world. Uh, all of this is with the intention to make clear the identity of the church and the commitment that we have to scripture. That's why it's called Biblical Research Institute. We have uh, several publications. We have a website. We also answer questions that uh, most of them are in the website. And we also serve the leadership of the, of the church worldwide. When there is a theological issue, something related to fundam fundamental belief, and even to church manual, when it has to do with theology, usually we, we are involved. So I would guess then, in order to be able to serve as one of these five directors or associates, you have to be a theologian. You're not just a pastor, you're like a theologian. Would that be correct? Yes, it's correct. Uh, we call people who have gone through a process of education and they finally reach their doctorates in those fields so that they can be more helpful. Because we do not only serve the church, I mean the church, the membership of the church in general. But one of our basic, uh, I would say, um, targets is our colleagues, theologians, professors, professors of theology worldwide. So we have projects and programs to reach them and also to involve them in research uh, that we are doing. So we do not work alone. It's important to, to emphasize that. But we have a pool of scholars that uh, we put together to help us win our projects. For the full episode and other videos delving deeper into the Seventh-day Adventist faith and its story, visit our official channel on YouTube. Through a major humanitarian and spiritual effort in Papua New Guinea, entire communities are coming together, receiving essential medical care while also embracing a message of faith, hope, and renewal. The impact is so profound that more than 2,000 locations across the country, including prisons, have been touched by this wave of faith.
In April, a powerful movement swept across Papua New Guinea. The energy and enthusiasm were palpable as communities united in faith and hope. It began with a mega health clinic at Mount Hagen, where thousands lined up for medical care, provided by a team of international and local volunteers. A joint effort of the 10,000 Toes campaign and Adventist World Radio, the clinic transformed the lives of thousands, including those who had their sight restored through cataract surgeries. After addressing physical needs, the focus shifted to spiritual health. The PNG for Christ program launched with colorful welcoming events, including marching bands, choirs, and flag raising ceremonies. This was a program with a difference, not just held in one location, but at more than 2,000 sites nationwide, even in prisons. Speakers came from across the South Pacific and beyond, joining hundreds of local preachers to share the gospel with enthusiastic crowds. Among the speakers was General Conference President Elder Ted Wilson, who also met and prayed with the Prime Minister and other government officials during his visit. PNG for Christ touched the lives of many individuals from all walks of life. People embraced the messages of hope and transformation. Young and old alike, embarking on a journey of faith. And the impact has been extraordinary. Thousands of people were baptized during the program and thousands more have committed their lives to Jesus. And it is a privilege to see you know, people coming from all different walks of life strengthening their faith and affirming their faith to be baptized and to be called disciples of Jesus. The program also made a big impact on the international presenters. And for our team, our team coming here and we'll be partnering with this province this is wonderful because we see something bigger, we see something different, and there is so much that we can learn from the people here. And I believe when we, when we give to others, when we support others, we'll be blessed locally as well. In my life as a, as a young minister, I've just had a, a less than two years experience in the field. And this evangelistic campaign has been teaching me a lot of lessons. And uh, when I will go back to my country, uh, to my school where, uh, where I'm serving, I'll take up the challenge of uh, evangelizing more, uh, especially to, to the students that I serve. There are three things that really were memorable for me uh, during my trip to Papua New Guinea. Firstly, how kind, hospitable and welcoming the people were. Secondly, how much effort they put into organizing the program. So it was originally meant to happen in 2020, and when it didn't happen, uh, the people continued Bible studies and they did small groups, and they put so much effort into making sure that people would be prepared for PNG for Christ 2024. And then thirdly, I was amazed by the commitment of the people there. You know, during extreme rain and extreme heat, they would still be out there listening to the messages. So I was really inspired by my time there, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to have been there. An event that unites physical and spiritual health, reaching people from all ages and from all walks of life. A true inspiration both within and beyond the borders of Papua New Guinea. About 500 people visited a recent Bible exhibition in Madrid, showcasing the significance of scripture and community engagement. The Bible exhibition, known as Expo Biblia, was held in Madrid, Spain, drawing approximately 500 attendees. Coordinated by the Ventas Adventist Church, this cultural event marked the first of its kind in the city. Over three days, visitors enjoyed children's activities, musical performances, and a chance to connect with the church. Attendees expressed gratitude and engaged in meaningful discussions about faith. Notably, 40 participants filled out surveys, expressing interest in the church and its activities. Organizers hope the seeds of faith planted during this exhibition will bear fruit in the community. We see the power of unity and outreach. Great job to everyone involved in sharing hope and inspiration through the Word of God. Over 1,100 Adventist pastors and their spouses 
gathered in Acajutla, El Salvador, for the third and final segment of the Inter-American Region's territory-wide ministerial retreat. Regional church leaders from Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala gathered for a three-day ministerial retreat to connect with God and fellow peers. The event featured cultural displays, with attendees marching in traditional outfits and waving flags. Pastor Eli Henry, president of the Inter-American Region, welcomed participants at the ministerial retreat, urging them to renew their commitment to Jesus, attend seminars, spend quality time with their spouses, and enjoy nature and fellowship. Although the initial goal was to host over 3,000 pastors and their spouses, logistical challenges led to the retreat being split into three segments to cover Mexico with Colombia and Venezuela, the Caribbean, and Central America. The event featured prayer, seminars, presentations, and private family counseling sessions. The retreat, centered on the spiritual well-being of pastors and their families, highlighted the importance of nurturing a deep relationship with God and the value of taking time for rest in sustaining a thriving ministry. At Ebenezer Primary School in Dominica, the new school year kicked off with excitement as teacher Antonia introduced a special project. She presented a time capsule named Jerry, inviting third graders to write their prayer requests for the year. On the Caribbean island of Dominica, Miss Samuel is using a clever way to teach her third grade students about prayer, a time capsule. Last year, to begin the school year, I did something different. I saw a friend of mine introduce a time capsule and she said that she placed different goals, dreams, desires in a box for students and then at the end of the term, she opened the box and then the students could testify whether some of their dreams came true. Miss Samuel directed each of her students to write their prayer request down, then lock them in a prayer time capsule for one year. Once the year was over, they could open the time capsule to see how God had answered their prayers. The students were excited about the idea, but one important detail remained. All right, so Zane wanted to know what's the name of the box, and I said, no, Miss, can I name the time capsule? And so he decided. I named the time capsule Jerry. Jerry the time capsule. So we sealed Jerry up and we've been praying for a whole school year. After a year of waiting, the students were finally ready to see how their prayer requests had been answered. So right now I'm going to dig into Jerry. Anybody's ready? Yes. Lights, camera, action. All right, so open and let's see what we prayed for. Many different prayer requests were read. The students' excitement grew as they realized God had been answering their prayers. One student wanted to meet with his father, and he was actually able to meet with his father. Um, one student wanted um, to get principal's list, and that student got principal's list. And there's one child who never got a first grade, um, which is 85% and up, and that child actually got that. The students didn't only pray for themselves. They asked God to take care of their families as well. My little friend was very sick and I wished for him to get better. All right, so did your little cousin get better? So I'm happy for the, having Jerry and having to experience Jerry the Time Capsule for this school year. Miss Samuel's students may never forget how Jerry the Time Capsule taught them that God answers prayers. Please pray for teachers in schools everywhere who are helping children understand the power of God. As a school thrives, the need for expansion has arisen due to overcrowding. With a history of excellence since 1976, Ebenezer School is raising funds through the 13th Sabbath offering for a new building. This concludes this week's episode of ANN. Join us next week for more news from the global Seventh-day Adventist Church. Did you know the Seventh-day Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch other amazing videos? Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Make sure you click the subscribe button so you never miss a new video. Leave a comment or a prayer request. Our dedicated team is here to pray for you 24-7. Before we say goodbye, we'll leave you with some good news from the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 10 and 11. The text says, But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. 
And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, when we will have more news of faith, love, and hope. God bless.